Hi, this is Su Jang. Welcome to my channel. Today, I took a day off and went on the glamping trip. It's about an hour and a 40 minute drive from my house, and I'm planning to use FSD to get all the way to the glamping site. With FSD version 12, it allows you to not keep your hands on the steering wheel as long as your gaze is properly detected. I'm curious to see how comfortably I can reach my destination. The distance to the destination is 69 miles and it says it will take hour and 36 minutes. The battery is currently at 89% and it's estimated that I'll have 66% remaining upon arrival. Right after exiting the parking lot, FSD needs to make a right turn. The car smoothly merge into the traffic after letting oncoming vehicles pass by. Now getting onto the highway. The 360 turning section was handled smoothly. Honestly, when using FSD on highway, you hardly need to do anything. But it's always a good idea to stay alert for any situation. We need to be on the highway for about 20 minutes, and since we're getting hungry, I'll let FSD handle the driving and we'll eat some kimbaps and snacks. If the vehicle in front is going slowly, FSD will move into the passing lane, and when he sees a car approaching from behind, he will move back to the right lane, just like a human driver would. At one point, FSC tried to the switch to the left lane, but there was a something in the middle of the lane, so I cancelled the FSD to avoid running over. It's a bit disappointed that FSD doesn't yet fully recognize and avoid potholes or objects laying flat on the road surface. Tesla said that version 13 will have a performance improvement of about 3 to 5 times over version 12, so I hope these aspects will be in as soon. From here, we'll exit the highway and continue on local roads and the FSD continues to drive smoothly on its own. It feels like we are gradually entering deeper into the countryside. It's mid-November, so most of the autumn leaves have fallen here, but there are still some patches remaining and the colors were really beautiful. Although it handles the whiny roads well, it reduced speed more than a typical driver would. If there is a car behind us, or if I felt that we are going too slow, I'll press the accelerator a bit more to increase the speed. Even when turning at higher speed, there didn't seem to be any issues. I think it's technically possible, but FSD seems to be designing to handle steering a bit more cautiously for now. Sometimes when navigating sharp corners, it would slightly cross or touch the center lane and then move back in. It's like a human doing out in style handling. And it wouldn't do this if it detects oncoming cars. We arrive at the entrance of the glamping site. From here, it's an unpaved road, so I took over the driving. From the start point to here, aside from that one time on the highway when I took over to avoid an object in the road, we got here without any intervention on my part. I didn't even need to keep my hands on the steering wheel all the time, making long distance driving feels more comfortable. There's no separate check-in lobby. When you book online, they provide a passcode to each cabin which you enter to get in. 
It's similar in concept to Auto Camp we visited before, but it feels a bit smaller and cozier. Originally, this place was called Getaway Cabin, but now it's been renamed to Postcard Cabin. This campsite doesn't have Wi-Fi because it was initially started to digital detox purposes. There is even a box provided to store your phones, which is fun piece of history. Still, mobile reception is available. We arrive in front of our cabin. We have 64% battery remaining, which is 2% more used than what was initially estimated at departure. We used 31.4 kilowatt hour to travel the 69 miles. Each cabin has a name. The one that we booked is called Saggy. The highlight of this cabin is the full wall window beside the bed. Since it's a glamping, all the necessary utensils and dishes were provided. They even prepare a dog bowl and a treat in advance because we mentioned we'll be bringing our dog. Before it got darker, we took a walk around the glamping site. There's a nature trail, we decided to check it out. Because it's a weekday and not many people were around, the fallen leaves were thick on the ground. Our dog seems to enjoy the feeling of leaves you know, hopping around. We didn't bring all our camping gear since it's a glamping. I just brought some gears I had previously prepared for camping, store in Milwaukee Packout Organizer. Starting to feel hungry, we decided to prep dinner. We pre-purchased campfire wood when we made a reservation, so they had it ready for us. This time, we're grilling some beef. The meat was cooked very deliciously. We also grilled some asparagus and mushrooms. Food always tastes amazing when you're eating in nature. By the time we finished eating, it was getting quite dark. We spent time chatting and enjoying the campfire. Before it gets colder, I'll look for and introduce other camping sites. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. See ya!